yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Amen. Even though we cannot see him, we know that he is working in our lives, and we, have, we know that he has done a work in our lives. Amen? Let's just lift up a word of prayer this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Lord, right now we are lifting your name on high. We are forgetting all things, Lord God, that we came here with. We are putting all things down, Lord God, at your feet. Lord God, we are asking for your forgiveness, Lord God. Lord, for anything we may be doing in our lives that is not in alignment with your will, Lord God, we are asking for your grace and your mercy that covers all things, Lord God. Your perfect love that casts us away from all
whatever you are doing this year, Lord God. We are trusting that you have a plan. We are trusting that you have a purpose, Lord God. Hallelujah. Prepare us, Lord, to be laborers, to do the work. We are asking for your strength, Lord God. We are not just saved for ourselves, but for others around us, Lord God. Sunday of the year, I can't miss church. How could not I be here to worship the Lord, to give Him the praise and to give Him the glory? First Sunday of the year, first day of the week, Jesus rose from the grave. Amen. And it's a beautiful opportunity that we have that we can come out to the house of the Lord to worship Him today. Let us pray for those who could make it, whatever the situation might be. Keep them in prayer that the Lord will strengthen their joints, muscles, and thoughts, and mind, and body, and spirit, that they can find they can find their place in the Lord today. Amen. Many would like to be here, but because of circumstances, they are unable to be here. But let us pray for one another, even as the days and the years goes by. Amen. Welcome to church. Praise the Lord. Welcome, everybody. Amen. Um, we want to keep a couple of people in prayer today. Uh, Pastor Thomas uh, in Jamaica. I uh, want to pray for her today. Special day for her. Uh, as she challenge, as she face a challenge of her life here on earth and to face the challenge of good health and everything in the Lord. And we want to pray that God will be with her this very same hour as we are having church. She's experiencing some challenges, challenges in her body. We want to pray that God will keep her through this very hour. I'm going to ask the church to pray 
stand in prayer. We want to also pray for Sister Laura. We have lost a niece. Kind of a report on the first Sunday of the year. But everything working together for good to them that God So remember Sister Veronica today, his niece passed away for a couple of weeks now. And um, behind the scene, we are giving her all the encouragement we can. And I just want the church to really pray for her today. She's not here because she's preparing to go to be in her family out of the country and to show support. So can we just stand and pray for these two individuals and later on we'll pray. Yes. Pray for Sister Johnson's uh, sister in Jamaica, who is in the hospital since yesterday. A brother in the state, who having some challenges. God will move in their lives. What a mighty God we serve! It's rather interesting to see how much we believe that God can answer our prayer here and move four thousand miles away. That's the kind of a confidence we have in our God. Let us start praying. Please be the Father of heaven. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, that you are omnipresent. Your God, you are here, there, and everywhere. And you can hear the call of your children. Oh, God, doesn't matter how close or how far the situation is. God, if you reach down your hands and touch those, oh, God, that need to be healed. Or they may not be calling on you for healing, but they need to be healed.
perfect, but there is a love, oh God, that runs deep for you, Lord. In this weather we are out, oh God, to lift up your name in your house. And so we glorify you and give you thanks in the name of Jesus. The people in the house say amen. something to be done for the Lord. And it's just amazing. Uh, all we, I imagine for the, the, the praise and worship team, all week they, they are thinking about the songs. They're thinking about the songs they're going to sing. And, and if, they are not, if they are not thinking about a new song, they're thinking about the songbook and what, by, what might be in the songbook that they could readily sing and it's be a blessing to the church. <laughs> it's a constant thing that musicians are constantly thinking oh we're going to play that song I just want to hear them sing it amen and the saints are thinking I got to be in church Sunday uh, I just can't wait for the day to come amen to be in church so one thing about this church you've never been disappointed no matter how few we are or how many we are you're never disappointed when you come to church you're going to be fed spiritually you're going to hear the word of God. You're going to sing. You're going to worship. And you're going to praise your God when you come to this church. No time to waste because we know God is good. Today, I'm going to give the opportunity to testify, to give God the praise the first Sunday of the year. You have this opportunity to voice your testimony before the Lord. And if I forget, because I'm carried away by the Spirit, somebody just remind me, Pastor, you did say testimony. Amen. I want to give the saints opportunity to voice their thoughts before the Lord. What a beautiful night of this New Year's Eve service we have. Amen. We've been enjoying the, 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 the Christmas celebration, the dinner, amen, and the team that work on the dinner, the pure lovely dinner, uh, the, the New Year's Christmas Sunday, the team that work that we had a beautiful Christmas Sunday worship. Oh my goodness, that was awesome. The children singing. And New Year's Eve. Oh my goodness, that was not a that was a dandy. We had a beautiful service to ring in the new year. We sing and we dance and we prance and we lift up the name of the Lord till about one o'clock or something. Eat and drink and all the cooks. Our, our sister, sister Joy, you, you come home again with another fine cooking. <laughs> Amen. But a soup. What kind of soup was it? Oh, some, sometimes it tastes like manish water. Sometimes it tastes like beef soup. I, I first I'm understanding it was chicken. That was chicken? Oh my God. I thought it was beef or goat or something. But, but it, it was good. And, uh, everybody was had a great time with the Lord. Service over and everybody was still here trying to enjoy a wonderful New Year's. It was not this, I was not disappointed. How about you? Not at all. This is the best place you could ever be. Amen. And I enjoy the Lord. I enjoy things concerning the Lord. I enjoy my God. I love the Lord with all my heart. Even if I fall on my face, I still love the Lord. Even if things not going right, I love the Lord. And if I'm in the hospital or not in the hospital, I love the Lord. Wherever I am, I will praise Him. God bless you today. You have your Bibles turned to Genesis chapter 8. And read from verse 20 to 22. That was a long introduction. Eh? It was it worth it. 
Farewell and greetings. All right, thank you. All right. Now, Noah built an altar unto the Lord and took up every clean beast and every clean fowl and offer burnt offerings unto the Lord and on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savior. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground anymore for man's sake. For the imaginations of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite anymore everything living as I have done. While the earth remains, uh, remain it, seed time and harvest, hold and eat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Bow your heads, please. Dear God, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you concern for us. After the flooding of the earth, God, you say in your heart, amen, that you will not destroy the hurt or curse the hurt anymore. Amen. But there will be seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter. Day and night shall not cease. And we thank you for this blessing upon the earth. And Genesis 9 verse 1, And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is a beautiful scripture here that we have just read. And if I should choose a theme today, it is simple. It's a new season. Amen. Fresh anointing is coming our way. Amen. It's a new season. I was, as I read through the scripture, there's something that really, I read this over and over. Um, but as I was reading, there's something stand out, not in my message, but. <laughs> and God said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground. Anymore for man's sake. God said in his heart. That is very interesting that God reveal his mind to humans. God reveals what is in his heart, in his mind, in his thoughts to human. Isn't that interesting? What is hidden in the secret of God? He reveals it. And this is Moses writing here. This is not Noah. And this interaction was for Noah, but Moses is writing this. So I wonder if Noah may have passed on this information. Or God just reveal all these things to Moses. Isn't that interesting? Something to really look into deep, deep stuff. But let's take it like this. Now, What's also stand out for me, God said, as long as the earth endures, we can sow our seed, plant our crops, and we'll have time to reap it. There will be cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. What are we experiencing right now? Winter. Cold. And what the cycle of the 24-hour is we are facing. Day. And then later on, we're going to have night. That's what God said in, in his heart. And we are actually experiencing what God said. Don't tell me there's no God. <laughs> Amen. This is right after the flooding of the earth. God said that. And now we are having... It appears as if prior to the flooding of the earth, everything, the day or whatever it was, stationed. Humans never see rain before fall in such a way in the time of Noah. 
And the first time they saw rain fall, the earth flooded. And God renewing his vow with humans and say, as long as the earth endures, we're going to have all these seasons. And we, hap we happen to experience these seasons. We just finished the summer. It was hot and nice. And now we are experiencing the winter and the cold, and it's cold and nice. God set these things up for us after the flood. And nobody can change it. What a mighty God we serve. So therefore, in Genesis, we do have evidence that shows season were the season that we are experiencing, God established them. Everything God designed is for a purpose, including the seasons of life. We also have the season of life. Many of us would live for some time, and then that life come to an end. Season of life. Season of corn. Season of peas. You're not going to walk out in the farm and see peas still growing. I work out in the country, and I come across a cornfield. And right now, the cornfield dried up. They plowed it up. All the corn reaped. And the peas and everything reaped. And all you see is the ground now there is saturating with the, with the snow. Getting ready for next spring to plant again. Now, the seasons of life is what we don't understand very much. What is taking place in my season? Some things we know right now. But what is the future of the season of my life? What life going to be for me the next five years? Or even next year? Or even the entire year? What is it going to be like? We all go through our season of life each day. Amen. And we only can take it one day at a time. Because we don't know what then we may have plans. But it's based on our season. Amen. Oh, Lord. It's all, but as we go through our seasons, it's very important that we have God in the forefront of our mind, like how he have us in his mind, to say, I will not curse the hurt anymore. Notice that it's only after Noah built his altar before God that God ushered in a new season for him and his family. So, it's important that we are continually building our altar. Our altar of pureness before the Lord. Our altar of holiness. Our old altar of praise. Our altar of worship. So God can remember our season. Our time on earth. It's important that we do that. Amen. So the question is where is your altar, after all these years of life and hurt, what altar have you built for the Lord? And if we can identify our altar, that is what's going to keep us in the season of our life. We must have an altar for God. What is it? I'm not speaking of us building a wood altar. Or building an altar out of brick. But an altar of service. What is it? Singing. Preaching. Teaching. Cooking and feeding the people. Giving. Playing the music. Prayer and fasting. What is our altar? We got to have an altar in our season of life. Because it's only after Noah built his altar. And made sacrifices of all the pure animals before the Lord. Noah was not afraid to take from the little amount of animals that he was able to stock on the boat. He take from that little amount and to make a sacrifice before God and a sweet smelling savior going up before God. 
and God remembers now. Amen. So it's only after we start making effort before the Lord, like I see some of you have been making, the effort to be in the presence of the Lord, in the house of the Lord. Even like in a weather like this, when the snow is a turn off, when you look through the window this morning. But it's my season to worship God. Nobody ain't going to stop me. I got this day to worship my Lord. It's my season. This hour is my season. When you were singing, sis, it was your season. It was your season to worship and to sing and to play before the Lord. When I saw you standing and singing along and worshiping, it was your season to worship. Somebody praise God here today. Hallelujah to God. Where is your altar? Noah's altar that he built before the Lord illustrates his walk with God. Amen. So when we find ourselves in the house of God on the Lord's day, it illustrates our work with God, our walk with God. For you, everybody, wherever you live, people are watching you. Every Sunday you come into church, your neighbor watching you, and to know the time you're supposed to believe in. And they know when you're late. You take his joke, they know what if you if you're a hot person. If you wear a hat to church and they're looking, where is our hat today? You think it's joke of making? We got a sister who come and testify about that. Her neighbor said, when I haven't seen you for a while in your hat going to church, her neighbor kept an eye on her every Sunday morning, even though she didn't go to church, that she was going to church. So people are watching our move, folks. Amen. So you have been here today illustrating your walk with God. Can I say it again? Lord of mercy, I want to keep this mic, but I have to move a little bit because we are flowing. Amen. Oh, praise God. Amen. Amen. You being here this morning is demonstrating to each other and your neighborhood your walk with God. Because on the Lord's day, it's my day of worship. You being at the Bible classes and the Sunday school. And the practices and the teaching and the preaching, it demonstrates your walk with the Lord. You sitting here today to be fed. And everybody come here today, I want to hear a good message today. A good New Year's Eve message. Challenging my spirit. You being here today, demonstrating your walk with the Lord. Somebody lift your hands and praise God. If you had stay in your bed... Because you look outside and see the snow, it demonstrates your walk with God. <laughs> Amen. Because you should be in the house of God giving him praise. That, that's where you would find Jesus on the days when the synagogue was open. Or he's in the cornfield. Breaking corn and feeding people. Whatever we do, folks... It demonstrates our walk with the Lord. The food we prepare on a Sunday, after, Sunday afternoon for the people. Demonstrating our walk with God. The time you spend in fasting and prayer for the church growth. And for the business of the church. The time you spend in reading the scripture. Demonstrates your walk with God. Whatever you do. Whatever we say. Or however we build our life. Demonstrate our walk with the Lord in our season. Today is your season. Praise God. Let not the here be our season, but the now. This hour. The time when I'm actually doing something for God. Oh, praise God. Demonstrate your walk with God. So we've got to think of some of the decisions we have made over the past. How did that demonstrate my walk with the Lord? And how can I adjust it this year? That whatever I do, it will demonstrate to my family, to my friends, to my co-workers, to everybody I run into, my walk with the Lord. Praise God. Somebody worship God today. Can I take my time? Now God regarded Noah's sacrifice as a sweet savior. Or literally a smell of satisfaction. 
Now I was satisfied with what God has done over the couple months. Uh, the time he spent on the body of water, moving around the earth. Now I was happy. He's on earth again. He saw a new season. He saw a new dimension in his life. I survived this body of water. I'm going to give God some praise. I had no idea. I thought the world was merging back into what it was, a body of water. That's what God came up on. He knew that how he set up things. Earth, a body of water. It was all water. But beneath the, her, the water, there was land. Or in the water, there was land. And God spirit moved over the deep body of water on earth and divided the land from the water. And Peter said the earth came out of the ocean, out of the water. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Now voluntarily made an altar before the Lord. And hit offer is best unto the Lord God. God responded unto him. And give him every season that would be beneficial to him and his offspring. Because he made an effort for a new season. Somebody worship. Because Noah... Made that effort of building an altar. You and I can experience winter, cold, summer, heat. Time to plant our, our crop, sow our corn, sow our peas, pumpkins. What other crop we can plant here in this country? Corn, potatoes. We can't plant bananas, nor coconut trees, or cocoa. That those take years to, to bear fruit. You got to plant the three months ones. <laughs> that is the environment we live in. Can we plant carrots? Carrots? Yeah, and some other stuff. Cabbage? They have to be about three or four months. Ha uh, apples? <laughs> Squash? But God give us that opportunity to sow and plant those things. God even work, you know, that the apple trees survive through the winter while other trees die. He set things up that way on this part of the globe. What a mighty God. Just to make sure that what he said stand. Not because the winter has the power to suck out the juice out of the trees and the plants. He allows some plants to survive the winter so there will be seed and harvest in. God have us at heart. Woo. Somebody worship here today. In addition, God made a covenant with all life on earth. Not to ever again curse the ground or destroy earth by a flood. This is not a reversal of Adam's curse. This judgment.